Thank you, John and Helen. Financial planning is a topic that is important to me because writing lists and creating spreadsheets are my thing. And my, be and my belief is everyone needs to have an income expenditure document. And if the COVID pandemic has taught us anything, it's the importance of planning our finances because frankly, this is one of the things that can make us sink or swim. So with me to discuss how we can all become better financial planners is Taiwo Okwo, the founder of Femminti, an educational platform that focuses on promoting financial education to develop a solid financial foundation and build financial wealth. Taiwo is currently a vice president at the African Finance Corporation, where she leads infrastructure investments and developments in multiple sectors across Africa. Funny thing, it turns out Taiwo and I share some interesting things. One is we have the same maiden name of Shonuga, but we aren't related. And two, our fathers are both traditional rulers in their respective constituencies in Ugu State. Welcome, Taiwo. Thank you. It is a pleasure to have you here with us today. Thank you very much. I'm really excited to be here. And, um, you know, it's so, such a coincidence that we have some similarities. So Yes, I'm it is. Really <laughs> yes, it is. So let's delve right in. What is financial planning? Wow. Uh, very, very relevant question, as you said, uh, Farrell. Financial planning is it, essentially a step-by-step -step guide for you to achieve your life goals. Step-by-step -step guide Correct. to achieve your life goals. Correct. And what do I mean by that? We all have aspirations, desires, and goals that we want to achieve in our lives. So without a plan, you're very much unlikely to achieve those goals. Right. So what a financial plan does for you is to provide you with a roadmap to get to those goals. Right. For example, your income that you earn on a monthly basis, your expenditure, your spending. You need to understand where your money is going, your ingoings and outgoings, and also your savings and investment. Mm -hmm. So what a plan, what a financial plan does for you is to provide you with a, you know, a roadmap for you to, to achieve those goals and, and your aspirations. Does that mean that you have to have lots of money to be able to plan financially? I would say absolutely not. Okay. And, you know, if, what, if the pandemic has taught us anything, I would say there's a silver lining in that, right? Okay. That um, you, need to, you, you don't need a lot of money to mm -hmm. be able to, you know, to, to, have, to do financial planning or mm -hmm. even to uh, um, achieve your long-term goals. Mm -hmm. With a little amount of money, you mm -hmm. can actually set yourself for success in the long term. Okay. What do I mean by that? When you have limited resources, you can actually become more disciplined. And the first thing you need to do, actually, is to be able to allocate those limited resources mm -hmm. to what you need. Mm. We're, gonna get, we're gonna get to the key fundamentals here about planning, right, and you know, economics. When it comes to spending money, mm. it's important for you to identify between your needs and wants. Yes, we were talking about that yesterday. Yes, absolutely right. So what are your needs? My needs are things I need to um, survive yes. on a day-to-day you know, -day basis. Yes. I need to pay for my kids' tuition, I need to make sure I have a roof over my head. I need to fuel my car with yes. transport. Yes. And then, you know, wants are things I have desires. Okay. Where we all have desires, but I think, you know, with the particularly challenging economic environment, mm. it's important to really focus more on your needs as opposed to your wants. Okay. So you don't really, you know, in order for you to be financially successful, I would say um, post-pandemic, we're all excited that, you know, things are opening up, are getting better. I would say prioritize your needs. Okay. And then when it comes to some wants that you do want to achieve, it, it's okay, but you can actually plan to achieve those wants and be very, very selective. So I was going to, I was going to touch on that because you just said prioritize your needs over your wants. But here's the thing. Nigeria is stressful. We all have to indulge once in a while. So are you technically telling me that I cannot indulge. Absolutely not. And I'll tell you one of my own indulgences. Right? I like my croissant and my hot chocolate. Okay. So <laughs> if I don't have that, maybe on a weekly basis, then mm. I don't feel good. Okay. Right. So I would say um, we live in a very consumer driven society as well. And we'll be mm. honest. And we, most of us, we grow up from being children to adult and we, we learn to spend money, not even manage money. Mm -hmm. So what mm -hmm. we need to do is to just focus on. The key, the, the key needs that gets us by on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm. But we also have um, 
once. Okay. And once, like, you know, designer brands, you know, you don't need to have that. You can get by with some but things. But that, 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 that can be a need for some people, to you're, be fair. You're absolutely right. And, it, you know, when it comes to financial planning, you need to understand your own unique situation, right? Yes. If designer gear is something that is so important to you, then you have to make sure that you find your financial resources and money to be able to meet that, yes. as it, not at the expense of maybe your child's school fees or you know your car, right? You don't want to you know, have a car and then you start, you know, you start trekking. So what I'm getting from you is, one, you have to look at your needs and your wants, but you also have to take into cognizance your personality type, who you are, what is important to you. Absolutely, and you, you, you hit the nail on the head that I was going to come to that. When it comes to money, uh, we all have different you know, ways we manage money, personality types. Mm. Some people are spenders, they like to, you know, to spend money. Some people like to budget, and some people like to save. Mm. So it's important that when it comes to you, know, you uh, putting a financial plan in place, try to understand your personality. It doesn't have to be a straight jacket, right? Mm. Because most people mm. tend to think a financial plan as something that is going to make their life hell. Mm. You, you put in plan a place that is unique to yourself. Mm. So if, for example, um, you have specific goals that you want to achieve in the next one, you know, 12 months, for example, I want to change the AC in my house. Mm. Then you need to start thinking ahead of time mm. and putting some money in place. If it's a 12-month goal, then you know that maybe you need to start funding that on a monthly basis, setting so you know, five so KSI to, to, to meet that objective. Okay, so all very important things, mm. but I'll be honest, it sounds boring. You know, it sounds like, really, this is really quite stressful, you know. So the question I want to ask now is, how do I make it a lifestyle habit without losing myself if I'm the kind of person who gets bored quite quickly? Okay. I'll start by saying that, you know, a lot of us don't do it because we don't know the significance of financial planning, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the th key things that financial planning helps you is to beat life's emergencies. And we know that life happens. Mm -hmm. A pandemic is a classic example. A lot of, you know, a lot of us um, had to deal with um, you know, salary cuts mm. because our employers were not making enough money. That's just the you know, you know, um, nature of things that happen. Mm, reality you of know, life. Exactly. Some people, people lost their jobs and mm. they had to you know, maybe go borrow. Mm -hmm. So if you have a, um, if you have a uh, financial plan and emergency fund, it allows mm. you to meet that. So, I think what I'm trying to say is that um, finance might seem a little bit, uh, you know, too boring, but A, it helps you to meet, you know, life emergencies, mm -hmm. right? B, you're able to live with a peace of mind. There's nothing like you having peace of mind, right? Mm -hmm. You're able to, you know, care for your family, you're able to set some money aside, and just also enjoy some of the desires that, you know, that you, know, that, that, that you like as well. So let me simplify this or let us simplify mm. this for people. There is the two, two key things that I'm curious about. Mm. One, I'm earning below minimum wage and cost of living is high. Mm -hmm. We already know that onion now costs something like 100 naira for one onion. So I don't even have enough to start off with. How do I then become a better financial planner? That's one part of it. it. Yeah. The other part of it now is, how do I simplify this financial planning model in a manner that regardless of my earning bracket, I am able to do it without it becoming bothersome? Okay. I'll take the second part of the question first, right? Okay. The best way to do it, just write it down. Write down your, you know, write down your expenses, right on what you're spending on a, on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm. I think uh, the good thing about technology is that we are moving away from being a, uh, a society that uses cash to mm. more debit cards and credit cards. So mm. you can have a record. Mm. So go to, just log on to your bank account and then write down what you're spending your money on. Mm. By being able to track your expenses, right, you're able to now decide you know, what are the things that I don't even really need on the mm. monthly basis? Mm. Do I need to start spending that extra amount of money on new clothes or you know, new mm. shoes? Mm. Or do I even need to go to the cinema as often as possible? Mm. But bearing in mind that it's, it's still okay for you to do those things, but maybe you need to just reduce it to certain, ex to certain extent. Mm. Or so, budget for it. Or budget for it, right? You know, writing it down and mm. budgeting. You hit mm. the nail on the head, right? What is budgeting? It's not something, it's just a plan. It's just you writing down what you do with your money, right? Mm -hmm. Your ingoings and outgoings, and you've been able to explain 
you know, to somebody mm -hmm. or yourself, being accountable that, you know, I'm making 10,000 Naira on a monthly basis. Mm. I spend 5,000. I have 5,000 extra. And that 5,000 extra Naira, I'm going to put 2,000 towards savings. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use um, another 2,000 to, you know, repair some things in my house, which mm -hmm. I've been putting off for a long time. And the extra 1,000 might be my entertainment budget, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why budgeting is so important. Mm -hmm. And to answer your second question about, um, I'm already on minimum wage. Mm -hmm. I, you know, life is hard enough already. I think that's the fact, right? We live in a very, you know, um, the pandemic has even made things much more, much more difficult. Mm. What I would say to um, somebody in that particular, you know, situation is that know your burn rate. What is the burn rate, right? Your burn rate is really your fixed, you know, your fixed cost on a monthly basis. Mm. What are the things that burn rate? Your burn rate. Yeah. Okay. What are the things that you, you know, you you, you must absolutely spend money on and mm. budget around that. Because at the moment you're just you're not you're not earning you know so much money you don't have extra so as long as you can cover your burn rate during this particularly challenging time then you know set your budget around it you'll be fine mm. and in the meantime I would say think about um, you know educating yourself mm. and developing new skills because that's what's going to enable you to um, earn more yeah so those are the two key strategies I would um, advocate for. Okay. Right. Know your bond rate, your fixed cost, budget yeah. around those fixed costs. Yeah. And then, you know, just educate yourself, develop new skills so you can propel so yourself to I, earn I, more. I, I, want to, I want to add to that mm. because we've mentioned the word budget a few times. Yeah. And let us not assume everybody understands what a budget is. In the simplest form, a budget is a list. Onion, 500 naira. Tomato. 200 naira, diesel, 1,000 naira, literally a list of items and the cost of those items. Absolutely. And then next to that is, okay, my salary is 50,000 naira. These are the things I need to spend money on. I need to spend money on feeding. I need to spend money on um, phone bills. I need to spend money on transportation all of those types of things. So it's li literally just a list of what you need to spend money on versus how much money you come in. That, to my understanding, is the foundation of a budget. It is, and you put it very well. And one thing you also need to put in your budget as well is savings, right? You have to include savings. Mm. But, you, know, you can't have a financial plan without, without allocating savings. some of that money to savings. Same things as emergencies as well, yes. right? You need to set some money aside for emergencies and even gifts, right? You know, we have we all have so, families, and so, you need to so, spend. So, so sorry that I keep I keep I keep interjecting because, like sure. I, I said to you yesterday, this is something that was really really very passionate to me. So again, simplifying, savings is a must. It's not a nice to have. It's a must have. Absolutely. Because emergencies will happen, life will happen. So the easiest practice for anybody in terms of savings is you just decide what percentage of your income you're going to save. And you make sure that that percentage can cover some basic emergencies, like if you have to go to the hospital, if you have to do X, Y, and Z. So that savings must always be there. And the trick I find is to put in a different account that you don't have easy access to. But it, it's, it's really key to simplify, because a lot of times when we hear finance, when we hear about financial planning, people's eyes, is, eyes start glazing over in reality. So I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what, one way to do the savings thing is, is this principle of pay yourself first, right? right? It's very, very simple, and a lot of us don't do it. It's about, you, you know, you've worked very hard on a monthly basis, right? And then you're, you get your alert, right? <laughs> your salary, mm -hmm. and it comes in. I would say pay yourself first. Mm. Allocate, is it 10% or 20% to, to yourself? And that money goes into a separate account. So a good example, like I said, if you're earning 100,000 Naira a month and you now decide to put 10% aside because you, you, your ability to save also depends on your income and your personal situation. Mm. So you now, if you put 10% aside, automatically, that's the word, right? You, get, you, you deduct it to a savings account. You now have the 90,000 to leave on mm. to meet all your... So when expenses. you're saying pay yourself first, you're not talking about pay yourself money you need to live on. You're saying pay yourself money that is actually savings. Absolutely. Okay. Pay yourself as the money you're not going to touch and leave 
with the remaining 80 to 90 percent. Okay. So if you were going to give us five key things to note to become better financial planners, what would it be, regardless of what our income bracket is? I would say, number one, know your current situation. Right? Mm -hmm. You need to assess what your own current situation is. Um, know your, understand your income. Make that list, right? Your income, your expenses, um, your savings, mm -hmm. and um, any debt that you have. You need to know what your current situation is before you can make a change. Yeah. Because as you can imagine, if you're not doing anything, if you're not practicing now, it's so difficult to make a transition into yeah. becoming yeah. a person who, who's financially planned. It's not impossible, yeah. right? So know your current situation. Number two is um, track your spending. Okay. It's so important that um, you, you understand everything that you spend your, you know, your money your on. Money on. Okay. The good thing the pandemic has um, you know, taught us is that we can live without some things, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So know your, you know, um, know your expenses. And once you have a list, you can, net, you can net identify some of the things that you, can't, um, you can live without and funnel some of that money into a savings because okay. it's so important. So is that number three? That's number two. Number three is now build an emergency fund. Build an emergency fund. So because the, sa the, the making of the uh, tracking of the expenses is what gives you the additional money to save. And then you can channel that money into emergency fund okay. to, you know, as a cushion okay. to meet unexpected expenses. And then even, I always like to tell people, right, that even unexpected opportunities, right? Okay. This, Times you might have an opportunity, an yes, investment maybe opportunity. Invest or something. Yeah. Yes, so if you don't yes. have that money, then you can't take it. So, very true. Yeah, very so true. having that emergency fund set aside to, okay. uh, to, to take unexpected opportunities. Number four, I would say, is um, try to spend less. You know, <laughs> spend less as possible. There's, always, there's, there's this rule about spending and living within your means. Yeah, we're all guilty. It's relative. Yeah, it's I, I agree, but relative. I think, you know, I can imagine that, you know, we need, to, we need to shift the mindset because the pandemic is, look, we're not going to kid ourselves, right? It's definitely opened our eyes when it comes to our, you know, personal finance journey. So I would say living within your means mm. as opposed to living above your means. It's, okay. so, it's so important. Okay. And the final one is as well, is I would say in that budgeting, in that financial planning, building a slush fund, like I always call it a slush fund for yourself to make yourself feel good, like your entertainment, yeah, entertainment your treats. Yeah. I, I so call that it, it my entertainment budget. Yeah, entertainment budget. So it doesn't feel that it's such a hard thing to do. I, yeah. I always call it like my slush fund. Whether yes. it, it's to buy gifts, you know, yeah. for family, for friends. I actually or, even have a separate contribute. line item for gifts. Yeah. And then a separate one for entertainment that is for me. Absolutely. So that your own personal thing that you, that you, you, know, that you enjoy, that you like, you need to set aside, you know, some, some money for it. And it's, oh, it's just going to be much fun. It won't feel like you're just... Being too strict on yourself. So awesome. those are the top five those tips. Those are the top five say. tips. Yeah. Those are very good five tips. And I, 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 will, I will add a quick caveat. Um, this is a simple thing to do. You don't have to have a computer. You don't have to do it on a spreadsheet. You can do it on your phone. Every phone now has, most phones have like notes apps. You can write it down on a piece of paper. I actually do all three. I do my main one on my spreadsheet that I look at regularly, and then I do my phone for short term. And then I also have a piece of paper that I'm always writing everything on. So it is actually quite easy to do it regardless of your level of education or your income bracket. This that's is, yeah, that's yeah. absolutely correct. I use, my, you know, I use my phone for a lot of things as well. Right? Mm -hmm. You make notes, but just make sure your phone doesn't get lost and somebody has access, <laughs> access exactly. to it, but like you said. Exactly. So you have backup or backup or backup. Backup and then embrace technology as yes. well. That you can't, you know, you, just, you, you, can, you can log on to apps. And some, things have become so simple these days yes. for yes. us to be able to um, yes. become financially you yes. know, savvy and financially you know, educated. Awesome. So the main thing I've taken out of this is the fact that it is simple, it is easy to do, and it is not a one-size-fits-all. Just make it work for yourself. Needs and wants. Very, very important. Thank you so, so much, Taiwo. It has been a really enlightening, very short but very impactful conversation, and it has been a true honor to have you here with us today. Thank it, you so much. It's been a pleasure. Um, I really love the, you know, the, the session, the show, and the topic as well. It's so, it's so topical. We Thank can't you. afford not to you know, um, talk about it. Talk, yeah, talk we'll, about we'll, it. Just, we'll just keep talking about it, keep talking about it. So 
Up next with us is our favorite fitness expert, Dolly Phillips.